as we've all been there before, Lillian, there have been times when we need to watch a rather long version of something, and maybe we're not in the best state of mind when we are doing so. I remember being either like just having a bad day, or maybe I was hungover, I don't know. But I was not paying this close attention when I was watching the original thing, so that subtlety, probably I didn't pick up on it as much. The whole reason I wanted to do this episode, you can listen to episodes of this, the 34 version, which is arguably one of the funniest, I had no humor in it because I was so pissed because I watched it with a migraine. (laughs) Yes, yeah, it happens to the best of us. Hey Lillian, what's up? Hi Piper, a lot is up. Uh, mostly, mm-hmm. I have put together a very in-depth, what was supposed to be a nice light episode, very in-depth dissertation on Michael Jason. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to mention right up top, because I think this is something that's come up on the podcast before, and I think it's definitely going to come up again. None of our listeners has asked this. I think I'm the only one who's actually brought this up, but I, I suspect after this episode, some of our listeners might. Has Lillian lost her mind completely? (laughs) The answer is not no. (laughs) Well, Lillian, here's the thing. You haven't been locked in an attic yet, but maybe after this episode, I will have to call Ruth on her doggy cell phone (laughs) and be like, okay, so you're going to get her up there and just lock the door. It's going to be great. I'll be there in a little bit. I'll help you out. Don't worry, doggy. We're going to take care of this. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Something that doesn't help any arguments I'm making to not be crazy is that Ruth does quote unquote text um our friend Ivy a lot where I send pictures of her from Ruth. So she she absolutely could do that. You just have to text my number and it'll get to Ruth. Yeah. Well that would defeat the point. I know. <laughs> I'd be like Lillian, don't read this text. Just hand the phone to the dog. <laughs> and I would do it without question. <laughs> What I'm alluding to here is that this was supposed to be a mini episode and I literally just warned Piper, she gonna be a maxi episode because I have too many good things to say. (laughs) Amazing. Amazing. Um, We are going to go through a few different things, but I just, there are some actual disclaimers that are real and not a joke that I want to make up front. First of all, this episode is very lovingly called A Defense of Michael Jason. I want to be super clear about a couple things. One. We know Michael Jason is a good person. That's not what this episode (laughs) is about. And two, we know Michael Jason is a good actor. He's in other Mm -hmm. things. He's good at acting. There's lots of other things that go into Rochester. That's what we're going to talk about. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mm -hmm. but I feel like you got the idea for this when we were doing our retrospect re-review and I marked Michael Jason as like three or four, like bottom. No, you said he was the worst. Oh, I did. Ha ha! Suck it, weirdo! <laughs> so I think that freaked out Lillian and she's like, this cannot be what Piper actually thinks. Let's help clear clarify everything. Well, because I spend a lot more time like going back and looking at the adaptions than you do because I like get screenshots for our social and stuff like that. Mm. So... I just, I'll, I'll go back and look at clips of him. And I'll be like, the worst? <laughs> like, of those first 10, you think he's the worst? I just remember literally what stands out in my mind when I try to recall him is I remember him having like a permanent, like, think of a stereotype of like a posh British jerk. <laughs> of him just being like, OJ, oh, hello, Jerk. <laughs> I'm just like, ugh, that's, that doesn't seem like someone I can fall in love with. And I remember that being like prevalent throughout. And then I also remember, I feel like when he dragged the wedding party up to Bertha's room, he was really mean to Bertha and he blamed her so much and he didn't take any responsibility. And I feel like they cut out all of the positive things that we hear about Mm. Rochester and how he feels about his wife and how he's cared for his wife. So that also just like was the nail in the coffin for me. But maybe you're about to change my mind. So I don't know. I think I will or I won't. And either (laughs) and I want to be also so super clear to our listeners because I don't think anyone would do this but when I posted the defense of Michael Jason in the Facebook group the Jane Eyre Files Facebook group people got very intense in the comments and we love it <laughs> yay <laughs> but there you can disagree with us but there's no talking shit about Piper after this so if <laughs> If you, if Piper still holds true with what she's saying and she lives in her truth, we respect each other's opinions. And I'm not going to, it's not going to be a fun time for me if you say mean things about Piper because you disagree with her. It might be a fun time for Piper if you say mean things about me. 
Oh, well, I was not going to say that about if it's mean things about you. I think I can take some angry Jane Eyre fans. So, yeah, if after this you were like, you're like, listen, Piper, you don't know what you're talking about. I'll be like, it's fine, man, whatever. And I instead will be sending you a handwritten invitation to a Kmart parking lot. Mm-hmm. with a, It'll be like a hand-drawn map on the back of like <laughs> a greasy old <laughs> bag. <laughs> It'll be like a little O and that's where that and it'll say you are here and then it'll be like some lines and then it'll be an X that says Kmart parking lot. Yeah, with like a little drawings on the side where it's like past the house with the mean dog, past the scary looking tree. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, God, I really hope this is someone's first episode. Piper knows the fact that there is structure for this episode, but not a lot about that. We are going to talk about contextually some things about Michael Jason that I think are important about him playing Rochester. Okay. Then we are going to watch several clips of Michael Jason. Whoa. I am going to attempt to put the video of that on YouTube. I know that because we're doing commentary, fair use means we are allowed to put it on there, but YouTube sometimes takes my videos down anyway. So go check out our YouTube Closest I can get to it is going to be on there. Um, So this episode will be full on there with with at least the visuals that we're talking about, if not the audio. Are you ready? Are you emotionally prepared? I'm ready. Tell me what's what's this? Was that the whole formatting thing? So now we're going to go into some basic background stuff that makes Michael Jaston perfect for this role because he's he's ugly and also likes to (laughs) (laughs) imprison first wives. So one thing that I also do want to mention that I do have here in my notes that I, 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 I want you guys to know, this is an incredibly biased case that I'm making. There's no there's no counterpoint. This is just me saying Michael Jason is amazing. I'm not including any negativity about him or any of the clips where I'm like, well, I don't love him in this moment. So we're I, not going to watch the birth of scene today. <laughs> no, but I'll be bringing up all the stuff that I remember being bad. Okay. So don't worry. Okay. I'll provide that stuff. Sounds good. I appreciate you and I appreciate that. So <laughs> the first piece of context, and by the way, our third secret ho- co-host of this episode, we had some fantastic listener feedback. Thank you to everybody who responded to my several requests that you guys said great things and it was really genuinely super helpful. But most importantly, thank you to our secret third co-host of this episode, Charlene, who wrote a whole lovely thing. And I went back and listened to their episode that they did where they interviewed Michael Jason, which is so fantastic. She tells some amazing stories about him there. And she also like I'm, talks I'm, to him about it. I'm not saying that he's a bad guy. Like I'm sure no, he's a you're saint. fighting me. <laughs> But like, I just didn't like him as Rochester. I know, well, which is why I said it up top because I d- he is <laughs> he sounds like for real a saint. Like he yeah. sounds like genuinely the nicest person. So the but the thing that I want to talk about because we talk about this with um, Siri and Hines and the subtlety in his performance so misses. Mm-hmm. I think the subtlety in Michael Jason's performance really hits because of this context, which I did get from Charlene's podcast, which is he had actually played. Rochester like in school like in high school or like the equivalent of high school and it was part of what launched his acting career like yeah. somebody who saw it suggested that he like join this program there's all those details in this show in the epi- that episode but he's read the book many times he like really knows the character he had walked before playing Rochester he watched a few different adaptions and in that interview he talks about like what he liked and didn't like about the 43 and the 70 and like really so he really knows and is invested in the character so I think all of his choices and moments that he has in this are with a level of intentionality that I think is really important and I really think having read the book now we'll be able to pick up on more of those subtleties. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty excited about that. Cool. But I think this, so one of the things that I will say that is a counter to what I literally just said, which is the idea that we think that adaptions need to be able to stand without the book. I think this adaption in general is really special to some people who find the, who are really attached to the book because it is by far the closest in terms of script Potentially the 83 is equally close, but we'll find that out when we do our rewatch next. Yeah. No, I do remember it standing out to me that there were so many moments where the 70 version or what is this? 70, 73. 73 version 
where they would have kind of like Jane's monologue to keep certain sections of the novel in the story, which great, but also uh, that meant that sometimes they had a lot of moments of characters kind of staring off into space <laughs> while a narrator speaks. And then they're just kind of like, oh, that's right. I just got out of my flash forward mo- moment and I'm back to acting in this scene. So eh, it's good and it's bad. Like <laughs> when we were reading the book, I had lots of like marks in my book around moments that are in like most of the adaptions. And then I also had moments that were in like very few or very specific adaptions. The part of the reason we're rewatching the 83 is because I was so caught up in the plot of Jane Eyre Mm -hmm. that I didn't register any of the nuances of it where the 73 we had watched enough and I was familiar enough with the story that like the moments that were different really stuck out to me. Mm-hmm. Those moments, for the most part, are in the book that way. So mm-hmm. even like the way that Rochester treats Bertha, I don't know that that's a great representation of like how we're supposed to feel about that moment. But the beats are what's in the book. Like he ties up Bertha in the book, he ties up Bertha. Mm-hmm. So if we're talking about not do we like this man, but how well did Michael Jason play the character of Rochester. I will just say, though, because I did just before we jumped on this call, I watched um, Lillian has put together a very nice video version of our chapter 27 episode. So I was Mm. going through that and there were clips of the scene um, from both when Rochester is in the room with Bertha explaining everything. Mm -hmm. And yes, in the 80s one, he also grabs some rope and helps to kind Mm -hmm. of secure her to the bed. But in the 80s one, uh, Mm -hmm. he then, once they leave, he sits down and like kind of like tends to her and kind of like strokes her face Mm -hmm. and is like gentle towards her. Michael Jason is just like, just like ties her up and then fucks off. And it's just like, Jesus. So you can tie someone up and still do nice things, (laughs) especially if it's consensually getting tied up, because then that can become (laughs) great. Not that that happened, but who knows what he and Bertha got up to before their marriage went south. Lots of fun bondage. That's all I'm saying. Did I I think we were going to talk about Michael Jason tying up Bertha? Yes. Did I think we were going to go to BDSM? No. Welcome no, to After not. Hours, Air Buds. <laughs> no, no, no. Am I checking this episode, Lily? <laughs> it's not I about am... Piper specific kinks. Oh. I was just going to say, I'm actually dressed as a pirate right now, so it makes sense that I'm going to take over. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So, again, that's to contextualize a couple of like big picture notes that some of our lovely listeners off of Facebook, most of these are out of the Facebook group. And I did not ask if people were okay with me putting their names in here. So, I'm just going to use first names. And similar to every single time I've ever read a name ever in my entire life, it might go bad. But just know that if I mispronounce your name, you are now in a very prestigious group of famous actors across the globe whose names I have mispronounced. (laughs) What an honor. I know. Congratulations to you. Anyway, so Rebecca on Facebook said, there are so many favorite moments and all of her favorite moments from the book are done best by Michael Jason. And that's why she is particularly fond of this. She also points out, and these are not direct quotes from them because people wrote like multiple paragraphs. She also points out that he has a great, he does a great job of utilizing the humor and that Jane Eyre is a really funny book in a way that most adaptions don't pick up on. And I did really notice that in preparing these clips. I think he is really funny in a way that like is very British. And so our little Midwestern sensibilities sometimes pick that up as mean when it's supposed to be funny. (laughs) She also points out that she loves that his eyes follow Jane around the room in different moments when she's not looking at him, like when he's singing and other things. He also is apparently very cute during the leaving scene when when they're doing the money flirting. I had already done seven clips So I couldn't include an additional one, but I do think that that was a really cute moment. He does a little look behind him and says, so there when he's leaving the room after that scene, which is very cute. But yeah, he did. He did a great job during the stay speech as well, which she mentioned specifically. Hmm. All right. Thanks, Rebecca. Charmaine says that she has a lot of different reasons why she loves uh, Michael Jason as Rochester. She again believes that he's 
the funniest of the Rochesters, which does seem to be a common thread with, from our listeners. Um, she thinks his grumpiness and sarcasm are uh, hilarious um, and that he does a lot of hums that are like, hmm, that are really uh, particularly funny. And like he uses them in this really humorous way, um, which I think could be re- like, I think that's part of why you might be reading him as super grumpy and is that the intention is funny. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, it definitely came across to me as more kind of like, hmm, I'm better than you than, than a like, hmm, I'm silly and fun. <laughs> like, well, and I'm so curious. Like, I think, I think it's, hmm, I'm a fancy man. Cause he's a fancy man. Um, <laughs> and, but I'm curious as to if, if it seems humorous with this context and knowing what the book is and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. She also points out his looks as a positive. So she thinks the fact that he is very average looking is is a good representation of Rochester and it lets his personality shine through, which Mm -hmm. I think he's adorable, but I wouldn't describe him as like deeply handsome. Yeah. The other the other thing that I want to mention is a few people in that Facebook group. I'm not going to read out all of their more anti Jason comments which there are plenty and they're they're not disinteresting it's just not what this episode is <laughs> I'll go back and read those and I will heart every single one of them and send you a little wink emoji and be like agree basically tear him <laughs> apart and hold up Timothy Dalton as like the better version <laughs> my people oh my god yes that I'm going back after this episode yes. to find all of you I love you so much shout out <laughs> Timmy D, 100%. <laughs> they do talk about the fact that they didn't like that he was so ugly, and they but they also didn't like that he was so old. Mm-hmm. And I just want to say, Michael Jason was 38 when they filmed this, he which is old, about the age that, Rog- that Rochester was supposed to be. Rochester was supposed to be 37. Yeah. And I think part of the reason he looks old is because of how deeply 70s all of the yes. costuming is. Yes. Yeah. He looks very dated. I think he looks dated, not old. Yeah. And it's funny because, yeah, like I'm thinking back to, and we kind of touched on this on like a previous episode um, when you accused me of making a judgment (laughs) based solely on whether or not I was attracted to somebody. George C. Scott, who like, I don't know how old he was when he made the movie. I assume he was older. (laughs) Yeah, older than Michael Jaston. But George C. Scott, I don't know, he looks better than michael jason looks to me i'm like michael jason yeah looks kind of like i don't know his hair it's just the fluffiness of the hair it kind of looks like it's cotton candy and i'm like oh god <laughs> i really think it's like the same it's just he looks so dated yeah some of the costumes not the costuming his fault. In this is hilarious <laughs> i will say like it's the funniest costumes we are gonna watch the scene where all the people are out in their pajamas and it like looks like it's supposed to be the 70s anyway Cute. <laughs> then he, he's good at singing which it was his natural singing voice is important she wants us to know that and that she, he had really good chemistry with his jane which cool. i agree there i think cool. they had really good chemistry then charlene's sort of overall thoughts is that which we're going to come back to J- charlene's specific mm-hmm. thoughts for the specific clips but jason really found the character and makes him believable all the dialogue in the second conversation and the second episode can be pretty heavy heavy handed and overwrought but jason says it and makes it seem really well done and sympathetic there's a great balance of his different traits so his the romance the bitterness the sorrow um and just generally sort of his love for jane is really balanced out and that's one of the biggest notes that was sort of a through line from all of our listeners is that they really like what Jason does in representing all of Rochester rather Mm -hmm. than just the most likable side of him. Mm -hmm. Rochester is inherently a complex character. Totally. And I think he does a good job of that. And, and I, you keep coming back to specifically Timothy Dalton. I'm not saying he's the best (laughs) Rochester, but I'm saying he's not the worst. Yeah, yeah, Rochester. yeah. It's cool. It's cool. Let's uh, g- okay. bring forward the video proof and we will, we we will analyze this in depth. Here we go. In depth, guys. Oh, okay. important question, Lillian. Is mm-hmm. one of your clips the proposal scene? Yeah. Okay. Because I remember that one falling severely flat for me. So I'm very you curious. You explicitly said you liked it in the episode that we Did talked I? about it in. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we'll have to. We'll, we're going to see. If you want our original <laughs> thoughts on it. Looking back, because I ended up putting the original episodes that we did on our YouTube this week, because I thought people might want to go see it. Um, I also did 
the first two clips I did actual video clips for. I've lost my mind. It's fine. But <laughs> that we did this, this was episode eight and nine. Like that's how long ago this was, which is wild to me. Cool. So here we go. So our first scene I am referring to as Jane's art, and it's supposed to be representative of sort of all of those drawing room conversations. That's like a lot of content. So we're not going to watch all of that. We're just going to watch them discussing Jane's art. In each case, I'd imagine something, something I was quite powerless to realize. Not quite. You've secured the shadow of your thought. You've not enough skill to give it full being. Yet these are, for a schoolgirl, peculiar. As to the thoughts, they are elfish. And who taught you to paint wind? There's a high gale in that sky. And that hilltop is Latmos. Where did you see Latmos? Okay, so the specific piece that Charlene was referencing in this is where did you see Latmos? Um, And the look on his face in that is like him being intrigued and starting to fall for Jane because he finds her so interesting. And I think there's a lot of subtlety in this performance and in this moment that I think is really, really well done. I agree with that. Yeah, I thought it was very good facial acting. The intensity and the emotion in the eyes came through very good. Um, No, I thought that was good. Yeah. Okay, great. So, so far... 100% on board. You're now in love with Michael Jason and want to kiss him and stuff. (laughs) Definitely not true. (laughs) Though any um, adaptation that gives a lot of attention to Jane's art and even shows us her paintings makes me happy because I myself am an artiste and it is good to see. Piper is now seeing a flaming bed. So we're going to watch away at the flaming bed. I have pleasure in owing you so immense a debt. Good night, sir. There is no debt. I knew. I saw it in your eyes when I first beheld you. What, sir? That you would revive some goodness in me. Your eyes. That expression did not... did not strike delight to my inmost heart for nothing. People talk of natural sympathies. I've heard of good genie, and there are grains of truth in the wildest fable. My cherished preserver. Good night. You're cold. Go then. I will, sir, when you release my hand. Your hand. Good night, sir. Yes. Good night. Yeah, no, he's um, okay. So what's standing out to me that I'm picking up more on from my first viewing is his performance is very subtle. Um, Mm -hmm. And I I do appreciate that upon like close study. Um, I think as we've all been there before, Lillian, there have been times when we need to watch a rather long version of something and maybe we're not in the best state of mind when we are doing so. I remember being either like just having a bad day or maybe I was hungover. I don't know. But I was not paying this close attention when I was watching the original thing. So that subtlety, probably I didn't pick up on it as much. Uh, Mm -hmm. It is good. The emotion is certainly there. And I'm going to try and refrain from saying this every single clip you show me. But it is kind of like a big part of how I judge these things is the Mm -hmm. fact that like Everything that I'm looking at whenever considering a Rochester is kind of held up on the scale against a Timothy Dalton performance, Mm -hmm. because that's my number one that I love. And like that, his version is just different, you know, Mm -hmm. like Timmy D's version of that scene, I feel like is a lot more kind of like intense, kind of breathy passion. But it's his is more melodrama where this is more kind of like a subtle, like still very good performance. So That's just the differences, but it's good. Well, and I think I think I agree that there's differences in the performance. And I think the whole reason I wanted to do this episode is because and you can listen to episodes of this 
in the the 34 version, which is arguably one of the funniest, I had no humor in it because I was so pissed because I watched it with a migraine. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It happens to the best of us. So we like full sympathy, fully understand like that. That is a thing that happens. Um, but I do. I think that's why I wanted to do this episode and pull out some of his best moments that so we could really dive into that subtlety because I completely agree. It's like it's the moments with his eyebrows. It's like the the little bits of like seduction like he's I think this moment when we read the book we talked about how um this moment after the fire is the moment that I think Rochester is being like oh my god I'm in love with her yes and that moment of like goodbye into Jane is like because he calls her Miss Eyre every other time yeah and that is actually specifically what Charlene calls out is the fact that the way he looks at her and the tenderness in his voice and eyes as Jane is leaving is super wonderfully done and I think I think I agree and I also think it's interesting to think about where this sits relative to a lot of our other adaptions because prior to this there was Orson Welles version very different Rochester not a very intense attempt to adapt like truly one-to-one adapt to the book Mm -hmm. the 70s one which again they the 7d one which really good but not as in-depth, not trying to cover as many moments, not trying to cover as many beats. But I do think this is much more similar to that than like the 34 happened before this, then Charlton Heston (laughs) uh, 49 TV movie. Like those were the ones that had happened before this. And I, I agree, but I think that a lot of the adaptions that we really love, including Timothy Dalton, stand on the shoulders of this adaption. And the idea that Timothy Dalton hadn't seen this 73 one before playing Rochester, I would be shocked if he hadn't seen Michael Jason's performance. Who knows? Which means that Michael Jason gets all the credit for Timothy Dalton's performance. I know you can't take that. <laughs> you I veto, just quick sneak it in, and then play veto, the next <laughs> veto, veto. Uh, well, uh, we'll just have to hunt down Timothy Dalton and be like, "Hey, look, I know you just started a new season of The Crown. Good for you. Congratulations!" But when we is need he you on The Crown. I don't know. Maya just texted me and she's like, hey, Timothy Dalton is in The Crown. You should watch The Crown. And I was like, I don't like the English monarchy. And she's like, you hardly even remember that they're real people. And I'm like, okay, I might check it out. (laughs) (laughs) He's some some old guy with a bunch of pins on his jacket. (laughs) He's got a bunch of medals. I don't know. I got to look this up. That doesn't sound (laughs) right. But I also haven't watched this season of The Crown yet. So who knows? He is in it because I did do a Google search previously and saw pictures and clips of him dancing with some ladies. So somebody. Yeah. Oh, he plays. Okay. Yeah. He plays a character. That's. I'm now really excited to go watch the season of The Crown. <laughs> yeah. We'll we'll text uh, Timothy Dalton and see if we can get him on the show. Yeah. We'll be like, okay, Timothy Dalton. Did you see Michael Jason's performance? Would you fight old man Jason in a Kmart parking lot just for Lillian and I's <laughs> entertainment? <laughs> we'll live stream it for our audience also. Oh, amazing. Uh- <laughs> Uh, tickets will be raised. Uh, funding will go to charity. <laughs> See these two old Rochesters duke it out. <laughs> so this is one that I want to actually read the context for why I'm playing it before we play it. But this is the moment on the stairs after the party when she's leaving. Um, and Rochester like comes and catches her. So she, so Charlene said um, that she really loves this moment in the book. And I promise not all of these are because Charlene said, but <laughs> they're not not that. And in the in the book, Rochester says goodbye, my as if he's like pausing. We, we talked about that moment a lot in our book episode about that. Mm-hmm. But Jason does not say goodbye, my, but he does say goodbye with this sort of like trailing goodbye like he wants to slip in an endearment. Though he did have a bit of that um, kind of like reflection and pausing in the last clip that we saw when he does mm-hmm. the kind of hesitation of saying my dear heart before of being kind of like do i dare say something so intimate so uh let's watch the stairs clip why did you not come and speak to me you seemed engaged sir i did not wish to disturb you what have you been doing during my absence nothing in particular I've been teaching adele as usual and getting a good deal paler than you were, as I saw at first sight. Did you take cold that night you half drowned me? Not in the least. Return to the drawing room. You're deserting too early. I'm tired, sir. And depressed. I'm not. But I affirm you are. 
so much depressed that a few more words would bring tears. Indeed, they're there, shining. If I had time, I would know what this means. Tonight, I excuse you. But not tomorrow, nor the next night. Now go and send Sophie for Adele. Good night. That scene, yes, that little pause at the end, nice. But the rest of it, just his delivery doesn't do it for me. It doesn't, I know it's supposed to be kind of him being kind of like guarded, like trying to like not show off how much he likes this lady. But uh, I just, when Timmy does it, like there's so much more <laughs> tenderness. Like, oh my God, I've just seen this line delivered with sweetness and like passion. Yeah. And that, that's not in that scene for me. So I give this well, one not a pass. And I think it's a different choice. Like, I think it's, I think Rochester's kind of a dick during this scene. Like, I don't yeah. think, I don't think Jason's wrong. I yeah. think that this is how I would interpret that scene. I think when he's trying, like, even his, like, bringing up that night with the fire, like, he's doing a little bit like, hey, remember that time we held hands, Jane? Mm. <laughs> it was pretty sexy, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, of course. And one thing that is very important, obviously, to mention when discussing things in this level of insane detail <laughs> of like trying to be like, who's better? Like, look how this guy paused and that Not guy didn't better. pause. <laughs> But it's just like, no, I mean, you can't really draw those conclusions. It's all kind of a matter of preference. Yes. And yeah. So I'm not arguing. I want to make come back to the thesis of this episode, which is I'm not arguing that Michael Jason is better than Timothy Dalton. I'm arguing that Michael Jason is not the worst. I'm arguing he's better than Syrian Hines. Like, that's you ranked him lower than Syrian Hines and Patrick McNee. Like that's so oh. important to me that you understand what you said. Oh my god. I just think at the time, like <laughs> I was like, this guy is just so boring and I don't like I him. And where there was like other things were like, yeah, Syrian Hine, I think it's technically the worst after well, okay, no, maybe bushy eyebrow guy who's drunk is the worst. Mike um Patrick McNee. Yes. But then with Syrian Hines, like before he became the biggest asshole, there was a brief moment where he was like insanely tender and sweet yes. and it was really cute. And so I liked that. And I never really got an insanely tender, sweet moment out of Michael Jason on my first viewing. I think so. you're wrong. <laughs> um, which is why we're doing this <laughs> not the okay. worst that's what we're hoping to walk away from is me saying he doesn't completely suck <laughs> uh, well a little sneak preview for the end i have all of our rochesters on a slide and i'm gonna make you put like say roughly what what, what quartile he falls in oh my gosh <laughs> So the next one is screaming in the middle of the night and specifically Charlene pointed out the moment. This is a moment where we see that breadth of Rochester's feelings. I think this is a moment where Rochester is sort of like panicky and a dick and he swings really dramatically from charming to we'll say less than charming, but it's, it's meant to be representative of the re of like a Rochester. Also the costumes in this are like the best that we've ever seen in any adaption ever. Where the devil is Rochester? I cannot oh find him. Oh my god, the school. sleepy hat. <laughs> all of their outfits are so good. Here, be composed, all of you. What awful event has taken place? Speak, let us know what has happened. All's right, all's right. But that cry! So many frills. A mere rehearsal of much ado about nothing. But what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that what he's had Ladies, keep off or I shall wax dangerous! A uh, servant has had a nightmare, that is all. She's a nervous, excitable person. She construed her dream into an apparition and has taken a fit with fright. Now, I must see you all back to your rooms, for until the house is settled, she cannot be properly looked after. Gentlemen, have the goodness to set the ladies the example. Miss Ingram, I'm sure you'll not fail in evincing superiority to idle terrors. Good night. I want that exact outfit that that guy is wearing with the sleepy hat. <laughs> That's and exactly the, what you said last time. The floor length, like, smoking jacket. Like, oh my God. I want to dress so that way good. every night when I go hunk shoe, hunk shoe in my little bed. <laughs> you don't turn sick at the sight of blood. I think I shall not. I've never been tried yet. 
Give me a hand. Hmm. Warm and steady. Good. Yeah, no. Um, we definitely see how uh, Rochester is when he's all panicky and angry versus when he's tender with Jane. So that is well displayed. Um, I love getting to have full attention on the scene where he takes her hand. Cause I think mm-hmm. as I mentioned in that chapter episode, I feel like little like moments of physical touch mean so much in these types of romances. And so it's good to see that on screen. So yeah, no, it's a, it's a good range for, for Mr. R. I think what this scene really highlighted for me. And one of the reasons I wanted to include it was, um, I personally think this adaption is it, certainly on the end of better, um, but wouldn't be in my like one or two slot. Um, but I think it is one of the best if you're someone who loves the book. And I think this adaption, this version gets a lot better when you've read the book and you know them. So like, for example, that moment when like, I've always found that line so concerning but like, I'm like, why, what is Jane, why isn't she doing something about the fact that he just, that her boss just asked her if she faints the sight of blood and she is doing something, she's getting a little thrill. <laughs> so I think that that context I find particularly helpful in this. The next scene we're going to watch is the proposal. She's a long boy, um, but there are be- some beats particularly at the beginning and then at the very end that I think are really well done and really a- like direct adaptions from the book in a way that is somewhat unique to this adaption, including compared to Timothy Dalton's. <laughs> Doesn't often see so large and gay a night rover in England. He's so happy with his little butt. Just <laughs> dropped it onto the ground. <laughs> no, he, he says he's flown. Stay, stay sure. Back. His eyes went down. I think that bug fell. <laughs> it's a shame to sit in the house on so lovely an evening. Though my tongue is usually prompt enough at answer, there are times when it sadly fails me. Come. The sun is setting as the moon rises. Twilight. Are you anything akin to me, do you think, Jane? I could risk no sort of answer. Because I sometimes have a feeling, especially when you're near to me as you are now, it's as if I had a string under my left ribs, tightly and inextricably knotted to a similar string situated in the corresponding quarter of your little frame. And if that boisterous channel should come between us, I'm afraid this cord of communion will be snapped. And I have a nervous notion I should take to bleeding inwardly. As for you, you'd forget me. That I never should. Come to me entirely now. Make my happiness, I will make yours. God pardon me and man meddle not with me. I have her and will hold her. Not the worst proposal ever. Um. <laughs> Listen, uh, Piper, you, uh, calm down with the praise. <laughs> you can't take such a hard left turn or no one will believe your opinions. Oh, my God. Um, no, like, again, I think his strength is in, like, the subtle, like, range of emotions that we see on his face. Um, it's... Uh, there's there's some things like just like with the directional decisions that I'm not as mm-hmm. crazy about like here I think the kissing happened in the wrong moment because here yeah. like before they talk before they've like settled anything he does a kind of classic for the time period grab and smooch which I've never been much of a fan of so he like does a he like forces a kiss on her and then once she accepts him then he just gives her a hug. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, you should have saved the kiss for once she says yes. Like, that's way more appropriate. Um, also, there was a moment when she says, like, the best line in the whole thing. Where she's like, do you think because I am, like, poor, like, obscure, little and plain or whatever. When they filmed that, there's, like, a bunch of leaves, like, partially covering her face. And I'm like, you can hardly see Jane properly when she gives one of the greatest lines in the movie. So, yeah. li- little things. It's not a bad proposal it's a yeah. it's all right yeah i think at the the beats that i the parts of it that i like is it includes like that is they use the book as a script right yeah. like that's uh-huh. what that moment is i agree with you the kisses are in the wrong spot and i think what's missing in this for me that 
adaptions that are arguably less true to the book Mm -hmm. um, actually do better is we don't see that vulnerability in Rochester that we both talk about liking. So like they're both delivering the lines in the book. Mm -hmm. But I, so I think this is a, again, like that good representation if you want something that is really, really true to the book. Um, But I think it misses on some of the emotional beats because in the book, it's so reliant on their conversation and they're like finally being honest where you, it doesn't build emotionally quite as much. But if that's what you're trying, if what you're trying to do is represent the book as a script, I think they do it well. Um, I think the way that Jason delivers the lines that are in the book, which have always seemed wild to me in some of the adaptions that pull them out, seem more believable. Like when he's holding her and he says the line of like, God, I've got her now and you're not going to take her away. I've always imagined that super dramatic. And a lot of the adaptions that include that include it really dramatic. Mm -hmm. And I think it needs to be more subtle or why isn't Jane going, what? (laughs) Well, (laughs) um, here I am once again, representing (laughs) uh, the eighties version. Um, But when he does that line, it is like insanely dramatic because he Mm -hmm. is this like melodrama character in their version. And he like, he holds her and he says that whole line. He's like, he's like, God, pardon me and metal not. I have her and I will hold her. And in their version, Jane kind of pulls away and she's like, she's like, there, I don't have any family. You don't have to worry about that. And he's like, oh, sh- 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 sh. he's like, let's just smooch and don't worry about it. <laughs> but- well, and what I didn't include is she does respond mm. to, like the rest of the that scene because we can't watch the whole episode. That'd be wild. Um, <laughs> but in that scene, she does say a little bit more and she like does say the lines from the book, but it's more like it's this jokey thing. Um, and I think similarly, the way that he delivers the line of like, that's one, one, not, it's not in my chest that's tied to not in yours. Like, I don't like this delivery of that, mm-hmm. but I yeah. think it makes more sense that she's not reacting super emotionally to it. If he delivers it that way. Cause I've always, I've always felt like that's the line right before they both break and tell the truth, mm-hmm. but there's a lot more, con- there's a lot more script to get through. Like there's a lot more things you have to say. Yeah in that moment. Mm-hmm. And so I, that's where it's like, I see what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So that's why he's, he's up there. And like, that's my only point is that he's up there with the best. <laughs> <laughs> Not the worst. <laughs> Not the worst. <laughs> you didn't know that you were signing up for an hour long episode when you made a casual remark. Oh my God. Nope. I can never, um, uh, <laughs> never be careful, uh, like this again. It's, <laughs> It's okay because um, our next one is literally us going back and rewatching the 80s, in which yeah, case. Yeah, I'm going to watch the childhood from the 80s one, which I would rather pluck out my eyes than do. You so this just... is the least you can do. Oh, of course. No, it's no problem. <laughs> but kidding. we will be like when we have our, our 80s sleepover this Sunday, uh, which won't yeah. be a sleepover. But when we do our hangout sesh, um, mm-hmm. I will spend the whole time leaning over and like whispering in Lillian's ear. I'm like, it's so romantic and you'll be like get off of me and i'm like no it's the best <laughs> piper i made you sit on the other couch 20 minutes ago how did you get this close to me again <laughs> i'm like it's the power of love lillian <laughs> it draws my, me near <laughs> my, my love to, for timothy dalton draws me nearer to you i'm <laughs> gonna make sam come and sit in between us <laughs> amazing ruth will be our buffer <laughs> that's a great point she's a great buffer 10 out of 10 would buffer again but there's a couple of beats in here that I love in the wedding. And a couple of our listeners pointed out moments as well. They particularly noted both Bonnie and Charmaine said that they that the wedding is their favorite scene and that they really appreciate the way that he like plays the many emotions that are happening in this scene and particularly how he grabs Jane's hand and holds on to it like he's afraid of losing her. I like that he says dick over and over again. (laughs) The record of the marriage will be found in the register of that church. A copy of it is now in my possession. Signed, Richard Mason. That, if a genuine document, may prove that I have been married. But it does not prove that the woman mentioned therein as my wife is still living. She was three months ago. I have a witness to the fact whose testimony even you, sir, will scarcely controvert. 
Reduce him. Or proceed to hell, sir. He is here. Mr. Mason, have the goodness to step forward. You. Have you to say? Please, Rochester. The devil is in it if you cannot answer distinctly. I demand again, Dick. What have you to say? Anyway, Briggs, he says Wood, Dick a few Mason, more times, but I'm not going to make you watch I it. I invite you all to visit <laughs> Mrs. Poole's patient <laughs> and my wife. Pretty funny. You Pretty good shit. He also, he also has a <laughs> moment <laughs> where he looks <laughs> sadly at Jane and, judge and talks to her. And whether or not I had a right to break the compact. Sad? Yeah, he's very sad. He's so sad, but my... the man can't act. <laughs> this girl knew no more. That's than you what I'm arguing. <laughs> my ranking on this was probably ne- legal. wasn't necessarily that he like Never sucks dreamt. at acting and shouldn't exist. It's more just like he just doesn't do it for me. <laughs> you say like one thing, and I take it as like, um, actually. <laughs> he's a good person and can act and you're like that's not what i meant it's like you take back what you said about how he should die i'm like never said that (laughs) did i say that like i play a clip for you and you did in fact say not only do i not like his performance i also think he should die i just wish he was dead well we don't wish that neither of us have ever wished that we would never speak that into existence yeah i think i really i like the way that he goes through so many emotions because it's like the denial like all the stages of grief i totally agree the way he like is pulling her hand is cute um Mm -hmm. i like that he like gets mad and goes i'm gonna put you over here yeah when my anger is (laughs) not gonna be seen you're not gonna see how pissed i am which version of it is it? There's some version, I swear to God, where he like he grabs, I think it's uh, Richard, and he like shoves him up against a wall while in the church. Doesn't that happen in one of the versions? Is that the Michael Fassbender one? He does a grab. He does. He's a little too violent with someone. There's also a lot of versions where he grabs Jane's hand and like pulls out her arm from the socket, and I don't love that. Yeah, I think that happens in the uh, Timmy D one. He like drags her out of the church. Yeah, and he also drags her to the church. Yeah, so she's just like, "Ow, dude!" Listen, I I get it. You've got a lot of feelings going on. You have to remember that you are a seven foot tall giant, and I am literally a little toad, I'm just a thimble. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, I think that's that's the I I think he does a good job of playing all those emotions. I do I I can't remember it feels like something Syrian Hines would have done, but I don't remember him doing that. So I, some I don't know. I, so, some of them have been more violent in that moment where I think um Michael Jason keeps that subtlety in his voice. Well, that already have we not. Okay, uh, let's speed watch this. I've so he's explaining things after he was just a few I seconds ago really mean and gross to his actual sick wife who just looks like door, she's scared and normal woman locked in a room. A few days a ago, <laughs> she's been in the room for a very long time, and he also I so pers- speak of I, didn't, I don't it have that cool. scene queued up, and we just simply do not have the time to watch it, but. Look how sad he is. Yeah, oh, darling, you no. oh, he's sad. <laughs> he's sad that he's about bad, to lose his you? girlfriend. <laughs> Jane, you condemn me to live wretched and to die accursed. No, no. God bless you. Direct you, solace you. And reward you well for your past kindness to me. Jane. Jane! Jane! The I really, I really just needed the chain. Jane! Jane! <laughs> we need to create some kind of a supercut of all of our Rochesters screaming Jane at some point. Oh my god. Most of them will be led by Syrian Hines. <laughs> it'll just be like, it'll just be like Dalton, then Syrian Hines, then Jason, then Syrian Hines, then Fassender, then Syrian Hines. Oh my god, that's amazing. Um, yes, he does do a good job acting and looking sad. Mm-hmm. So not the worst we've seen. Uh, he doesn't get cock blocked midway through by um, uh, Dick Mason, as we see mm-hmm. in that other bad TV version. Though I will say, like a big thing that I remember that took me out of it when I watched the scene originally is 
that he they do include the lines which are in the book where he calls um like mrs fairfax like yeah. a stupid old lady and he calls uh adele like a ballet dancer's bastard and i'm like dude not helping your case so yeah. i didn't like that they said those mean things i feel very similarly about the stay speech as i do the proposal which mm-hmm. i think are two of like our we talk about them a lot we talk about how important they are a lot i think they treat the book like a script yeah i think it's good i think it's far from great yeah so Agreed. okay now you're gonna get to see the second piece of evidence of me being a full-fledged crazy person here are all of our rochesters and i want i i want you to do two things one i want you to go through and name them all you can do either by uh, and don't look to here because that has the answers. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the answers there, it's, but that's cheating. It's too small. I can't read the okay. names. Are you asking for the actors' names or so just either the actors' names or what they're from? I have both, and this is going to go on our Instagram, and it'll have the answer keys on there as well. Okay. I will give you one one little spoily boy, which is this is literally all of our Rochesters that we've ever seen. So it has twenty of them. Okay, and one of them is from a version that we have reviewed but is not the actor that we reviewed because the actor that we reviewed is a bad person okay i was gonna i think i can guess because there's a face on here who i don't recognize (laughs) so that our listeners could follow along if they want to go to our instagram let's Mm -hmm. start with the um upper left hand corner and kind of go down oh i was gonna go top um left to right can I do that? That's what I meant. Like we're reading. Okay, Perfect. cool. Great. All right. So first we have Baldy McGee with a big old beard, um, guy from the most recent version we watched, National Theater. Then we've mm-hmm. got um, Wide-Eyed Comedian. Don't remember his name, but he is Canadian. Then we have Charles What's Heston. He What's uh, Canadian the, actor from? He's from um, the uh, can- Canadian SNL, um, whatever that is. Second City TV. Second City TV. Okay. Then we have uh, Charlton Heston from the black and white TV version. Then we have um, St- uh, Lillian's favorite. Why can't I ever think of this guy's name? Sexy McFace. 2006 version he's also in black sales toby stevens toby stevens okay then we've got um cool guy who's dead now r.i.p from the 90s version (laughs) then we have william hurt william hurt okay then we have um our indian actor i'm sorry i don't remember your name but he's from saying deal dilip kumar the wonderful um uh george c scott yep from uh my second favorite version um then we have the pretty boy from uh the web series version and then we have mr weird big mouth whose name i don't remember who's also in a black and white tv version 52 then we have a michael jaston then we have i assume the stand-in um for the dude from broadway who turned out to be Mm -hmm. not a great guy he was in a 2021 production of it so that's why Okay. Then we have a guy that I don't recognize. Um, I don't know. This is probably the deepest cut one. Uh, is he from like a radio version? No, because that would have been Syrian Hines again. So I'm not sure. What is this? Uh, that's the Star Trek guy. <laughs> oh, fun. Yay. Okay. Awesome. From, yes, when Janeway was on her holodeck. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Then we have the one and only Timmy D. God bless him. Then we have uh, Mr. Um, Rosebud, uh, Were the Worlds. Um, can't think of his name off the top of my head. Moving on. <gasps> Orson Orson Welles. Then we have um, Giant Eyebrows, Sir Drinks a Lot uh, from the TV version. 57, Patrick McNee. Then we have um, the living shark himself, Magneto, as well. Uh, <laughs> um, what's his face? Michael Fassbender. Michael Fassbender. <laughs> then we've got, oh, what's this one from? Black and white. Uh, it's not. Um, oh, wait. Oh, this is from when she's a linebacker. Jane is a linebacker. Yes. Okay. Um <laughs> I think first TV version. Is that right? No, no not the first TV version. That was, that oh, was this the, the first, first film with sound. Mm-hmm. Yes, because they made a big deal about playing piano. Then I would guess that guy is from the Utah musical. Yes, he okay, is. Okay, cool. He literally cannot find his name anywhere on the internet. Oh my God, funny. <laughs> <laughs> then we have, oh gosh, why can't I think of anybody's names today? Um, he's also from an <laughs> SNL sketch. Um, he's very hot British guy. He played Alfie, that dude. Jude Law, Jude Law, I did it. And then finally, Sir Screams a Lot, Sir Ian Hines. Okay. <laughs> Sir Screams a Lot. Oh Oof, God. I did it. It's that should have so, been timed. That was wonderful. <laughs> I'll go back and get the timestamp. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. So these are all of our Rochesters. Uh huh. Obviously, we're not going to rank them. That would be wild to have you rank them. But where do you think he feel, f- falls? Like some of the top, like top three, top five, or middling, or towards the bottom? 
I'll put him in somewhere in the middle. I'll put him in the middle. Okay. Yeah. He's, think- he's no longer um, a piece of mud under my shoe. Thank you. He is now a passing breeze. <laughs> yes. I would put him probably in my top five of these these sweet boys. Cool. I think if I had to like shotgun it right now, I think mm-hmm. I'd say Timmy D, George C. Scott, Sexy McSex Face, um, who's also in Orson Black Sails. Wells? No. Uh, no. Well, um, Michael Fassbender. No. Ew. Shark Face. Um, sexy guy <laughs> who's from 2006. Why can't it? Oh, Stevens. Oh, <laughs> Toby Stevens. Toby Stevens is number three. Uh, oh, four for me. Um, glancing, glancing, glancing. I I really like uh the guy who's dead now. You have to stop making that the way you know him. Um, I can't think of his name. Um, <laughs> William Hurt. William Hurt is number four, and then I would say number five is Orson Welles. That's my top five. I'm gonna do my top five then again off the cuff. We'll probably do like a full re rank of these at some point, maybe on our one year anniversary of our re- of our ranking. <laughs> I would probably say my number. Oh God, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do fast. I'm gonna do fast and loose. Fast and loose. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Toby Stevens. I'm gonna put at number one. I'm gonna put Michael Fassbender as number two. I'm gonna put George C. Scott as number three. I'm gonna put Michael Jason as number four. And ooh, I think I'm gonna go Timmy D number five. Cool. Nice. But I don't know. I, William Hurt and then the guy from the National Theater were also really, really good. I also think Dilip Kumar had such a unique take, and I really liked what he did. Me too. Yeah, this is a fun those game. Are, those are my like top ones. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Anyway, this graphic is going to go on our Instagram, and you can you can play along yourself as to how many of these you can name. Um, I don't think Piper did this fast enough that you're now cheating if you don't know that. <laughs> it's going to be up there and you can play yourself and I'll have the two keys, which is the for the names of all of the versions. This is the crazy part. It's not crazy that I put them on the thing. It's the crazy is that I made a key and there's two versions of it. One is the adaption that it's from and then two is the name of the actor. The only actor the I put on my <laughs> is the Utah man. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you for indulging me, Piper. This was a hoot. Little Maxi episode, which is going to... I just want you guys to know, we've been recording for an hour and 20 minutes. We're definitely... The episode's going to end up being shorter than that, but... <laughs> yeah, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. You <laughs> thought you were going to have a bite-sized appetizer before your big meal, but nope, you're having two big meals. One is <laughs> our podcast. Meals. The next is your Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> anyway... The last, so what we're doing next time, we've already talked about a couple of times, which is we are doing a rewatch of the 83. We're going to do it all in one episode. Um, you're all welcome that I'm watching the childhood again, potentially while I'm cleaning my house because I'm hosting Thanksgiving. But yeah, thanks everybody for listening. Uh, obviously, you're sitting there going, wow, what an incredible job Lillian did defending this actor I already liked I I think they deserve five stars for that so give us a review on the internet that'd be great Uh uh-huh um find us on social tell us what you think I can't wait to jump back into the Jane Eyre Files Facebook group and go find all my Timmy D stands and be like (laughs) we're gonna make our own secret club guys Lillian, thank you for um, adjusting my mindset on this man who is not the worst, but in fact, average. Well Victory! done. <laughs> We're going to find his, uh, we'll reach out to our good friend um, and uh, get her best friend, the actor's address. Send him a little postcard that says, you've earned average status on the Airbuds podcast. <laughs> Congratulations. From Piper and top five from Lillian. Yes, exactly. And top five is good when there's 20. Yes, very, very impressive. So thanks, guys, for tuning in with us. Happy Thanksgiving. We are thankful for you. So thankful for you. Uh, We can't wait to uh, have you back next week. So until then, happy Jane Eyre reading and watching. Bye. Bye.